Hi, welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. I've decided to do a demo painting of one of the many things I like to do. I'm very eclectic. Most of my work is a representational, take a long time over many, many layers of the Blue Ridge and surrounding area. But I also like to do what I call suggestion paintings, where I just kind of throw the paint around and if something shows up, I start to go with it. It's a really interesting experience and I hope you will look at those on my website. Okay, I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna start throwing a color around. Um, usually something just kind of crops up as I do this, and I'm just really re kind of reacting to the color in an abstract expressionist way where we just really are into the way the colors look together, how they react together, warm and cool. And don't spend a whole lot of time with this part. But, um, so I said something kind of usually shows up. There are a lot of people that think that's pretty much how art got started, is people started to see things in, um, you know, camp in fires. They started to see in the soot a face or something. I don't know. I don't see how that could be completely ascertained. But uh, there are people that think that. Uh, it's an interesting idea. But this is just a really, really great exercise. I really enjoy doing this. Uh, one time, I really didn't see anything, and I was just going to, well, I give up. I'm just going to do it as one of my, um, what I call my center of my mind paintings that are just music without words. There's no, no form to them at all, just a reaction to the colors and the textures. And then, as I looked at it for a while, I saw a fox. I mean, a really pretty good outline of a fox running to the side which was a bit, big surprise. Like I said, I didn't really see anything in it. And then to see this fox was really cool. So I dried it, like I always do, and then started to bring that out. And entitled it, Where's the Fox? Because I was so surprised. Also, as I looked around, I started to see some birds, too. So, and um, brought those out, too. Now, I don't do these in any kind of hyper-real way. They're just very strong expressions. Uh, I can do that. I know people are real impressed with that stuff. It, it takes a very long time. And to reproduce a photograph, you have to stick just right with the photograph. And for me, that's just not art. For me, art is a balance between control and accident, where I've got an idea, but then things kind of crop up as I'm working, and uh, just decide whether I like those things, you know, a creation. But I, I can certainly do um, hyper-real art. Uh, and anybody commissions me to do it, I certainly will. I can, I can reproduce a photograph. But when you do that, you got to stick right with a photograph. And there's, um, to me, it's just a real lack of creativity. It becomes a, um, well, it's a craft. It's knowing how to handle the paint and manipulate it to reproduce that photograph. And that's just not what I'm interested in. My main emphasis, I said, is the beautiful Blue Ridge. I mean, I live in the most beautiful place in the world my whole adult life. And a lot of my paintings are not actually of the Blue Ridge. Um, <laughs> their range is near it. It's my husband, who's lived here all his life, has explained to me over and over again, the Blue Ridge is really only a small strip of mountains of Virginia and North Carolina. But people call just Buttery Mountain in, <laughs> in Virginia the Blue Ridge in the western area, but it's not. So, you know, I tell people, well, I do Blue Ridge and I do mountains near the Blue Ridge that look exactly like the Blue Ridge. Okay, I think I might stop it now. Really, really, I'm liking the, the color contrast. I think it's getting really pretty. And I'm starting to kind of see something um, that I didn't really plan on. But if you look towards the center, you can kind of see like a, a very strong yellow petaled flower. I know it's not much there, there now, but I'm going to dry it and bring that out into, I think, a sunflower. I think that would be really nice, just a frontal view of a sunflower. Lots of these have a lot of depth. Uh, sometimes a figure shows up. There's all kinds of things. I've got to dry it because I need to do that to get to the next day. Probably hear me over this. I did another one of these. 
case that didn't turn out that good and you could hear the studs taking there so if I had to continue to add the paint to this I would not only lose some of the nice color contrast that I have in here but it would just start to get real muddy and muddier and muddier as the paint just goes together so I have to get it dry again to get to the next layer which I think is just about there That ought to do it. Okay, like I said, I, I feel like this could turn into a really interesting um, floral, a uh, real frontal, frontal type of floral. I don't usually, well, yeah, I do. It depends on what I'm doing. But um, this one I think is going to be rather frontal. And I get my colors out of here again. Still going to use a fairly large brush as I try to kind of pull these petals out more. And I still don't want to lose a lot of what I have, so I'm trying not to be too too particular. As I said, I have no intention of making this a real uh, hyper real painting of a sunflower. Just more of an, an expressive one. I like all kinds of art. Oh, it's all fascinating to me. But I think that if I had to describe what I do, even the ones that are of the Blue Ridge, it's uh, in between Impressionism and Expressionism. There, getting some nice areas there without getting too particular about it so that it loses these pretty colors in the background, which I don't want to do. And I'm not going to really define the petals just yet, uh, each one. I'm just going to just get a, uh, just a semblance of them and try to get the center area. Just get that started without losing a lot of what's already there. Just a, you know, just a suggestion. I'm probably just going to take this through this layer and then I'm probably just going to quit and it's not have it done because I don't want these YouTubes to be so long. So I'll get it to close to what I want and then stop the the camera and do the last layer and you can see the last layer on my website. I always have all these links in the description of each YouTube. Please watch, look at some of my others. Just thought this would be interesting to do. I know I've noticed a lot of artists are doing this and I might start to do this with um, some other types of paintings but I thought this one, my suggestion series, is the best for this because they go pretty quick. Um, each layer is pretty fast. The last one's the longest. Oh, I like that. Getting some more, getting a little more color contrast in this. Don't want to lose the intricacy of what I've got in the background. And I'm not going to put leaves or anything. I'm just going to make a really colorful background. Oh, it's starting to move around there, but get my finger over. It's going to bleed in too far. I'm going to get some more blues in that background and then I'm going to define the flower a little more and then quit. Because uh, as I said, I I'm, don't want these YouTubes to be so long. I uh, know this sort of thing could take a very, very long time. I'm considering doing one of those um, speed up ones. I found I got a site where you do that because I don't know how to do it. And maybe just do one where it's real, real fast and goes real quick especially of um, some of my other types of paintings. Uh, still, still be kind of long, I would think. But then I've seen some very complicated paintings that are done that way. Okay, now I'm just going to define it just a little more than the petals with a smaller brush, and then I'm going to quit and dry it again and then finish it. And it, it won't look that much different, probably. Let's see, get this a little more going. The uh, seed area in the middle of a sunflower. I don't want to get it real dark because um, I think it won't work well with the rest. Now I realize sunflowers do have real dark areas in there, but um, this is a painting. <laughs> uh, I use nature in my paintings and nature doesn't use me. To me, it's always something to be looked at for its own sake, regardless of where the idea came from. Like I said, I'm just going to 
you know, make these more visible. And then when I go back into it, I might modify them again so that it doesn't start to get any kind of monochrome look. I don't want that. Painting is such a great experience. I uh, really do live to paint, but I can't take them with me. <laughs> can't eat them, can't take them with me. So yeah, I do have to spend a lot of time promoting myself and selling them. I have had some success and more continue to try to really get them out there. Uh, I have artwork in 32 states and six countries. So I feel like that's very good. I do hope that they will be here after I'm gone. You know, I uh, always love that movie. You can't take it with you. That's a, that's a great movie. I think that a lot of people are, get too involved in things that are temporal rather than things that can really just last. And that's what most artists want, is they want something that's going to last, that's going to still be here when they're gone. And fortunately, there is a lot of, of great artwork that is still here when the artist is no longer with us. I don't want to get this muddy yet. I don't want to lose those red accents. So I'm going to do a little more with this. You know, sunflower is the inspiration, but I have no intention of perfectly reproducing one. Not hyper real. But anybody out there would like me to reproduce a photograph, no problem. I would be glad to do that. Very expensive, takes a long time. But I would be glad to discuss that with you. Okay, I think I might be where I want to quit with this painting. And then, ah, I want to do a little more. <laughs> That's always hard. Each layer, it's still kind of hard. Even though it's done in a lot of layers, it's still hard to, to quit. And I wanted to find these a little more. And then I will quit. Maybe a little more in the background. As you can see, it's it's very nebulous. It's meant to be. It's not supposed to be real, real defined. It is a loose, expressive painting. One of my favorite things to do because it's just um, it's just a wonderful visual exercise that I love to do, and there are a lot of them in my suggestions folder. So be sure. To, oh, that was cool. <laughs> Be sure to uh, check them out. Oh yeah, I really like adding that color in there. That's really nice. A little framing with it. And don't want it to bleed all over the flower. So I gotta watch out. I often use my finger in my artwork. Okay, don't want this to be so long. So I've got to just say at the end and get to the last layer on my own. I really like putting lots of color accents in the background. Okay, I'm going to try to just stop it right there. Thank you for watching. Um, you, there will be a link to this painting when it's completely done on my website. It may not look a whole lot of different, it's going to be a little more defined, even a little more colorful. There are other links, links to different sites that have my work.